Can you hear me? Harshit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why you are logging with others? Uh, email ID. You can log in the college email ID, no? Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, actually, my email ID was not uh, working, sir, uh, th at that time. Today, okay, now, today sir, sent now. If it is not working, what to do? No, sir. I have activated it now. Then you use that only. You. Okay, sir. And from next class, I will use it. Okay. And then, okay. have you registered for the Google Classroom? Yes, sir. Okay. Just a minute. See, who is Pawan Kalyan? He is there. Dorje, Krutik, Chirant, Shrikant, Akash, Harshit, Adash. Yes, sir. Oh. Who is that? Adash is there? Yes, sir. Adash, you are not logged into Google Classroom. Please log into the Google Classroom. Sir, I am logged in through my other email ID. I will send you my, uh, like, you must give permission before logging in. No, 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 no. I don't want you to join with other mail ID. Everybody has to use the college mail ID only. Okay. Sir. Am I clear? Yes. Sir. Inform others also. Adarsh, Harshit, Akash, Shrikant, Chiran, Krutik, Jorje and Pavan. And next, few students. Who is Brijesh, Karthik and Mausin? Brijesh, Karthik and Mausin. These fellows have logged in twice. Once with one by using the college mail ID and once with respect to other ID. So I don't want them. I want you to Log in with the college mail ID only. Remove your account in the Google Classroom. Just retain one mail, one user. Okay. Today we'll continue for the next class. Next to solid, it is the next to solid that is a square prism. Again, a square prism, but resting on corner. You take on a square prism of a square prism of 25 mm sides of base. A square prism of 25 mm sides of base, 60 mm axis length, 60, 60 mm axis length, <clears throat> rest on HP, rest on HP on one of its, rest on HP on one of its corners of the base. Rest on HP on one of its corners of the base. Such that, such that the two base edges, such that the two, the two base edges containing the corner on which it rests, such that the two base edges containing the corner on which it rests, makes, makes equal inclination width makes equal inclination with HP, HP, also underline that, such that the two edges, underline that word, such that the two base edges containing the corner on which it rests makes equal inclination with HP, you underline that. Next, full stop, continue. The axis of the, the axis of the prism is inclined at 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 40 degree to HP 40 40 degree to HP and and 30 degree to VP and 30 degree to VP the axis of the prism is inclined at 40 degree to HP and 30 degree to VP. Full stop. Draw the projections of the prism. Draw the projections of the prism. Draw the projections of the prism. Full stop. Full stop. Okay. I will continue now. Now what he is expecting? He is expecting you to draw the square prism. First you make a note of that. What is the prism given? A square prism. Resting where? It is resting on HP. Whether it is resting on edges or corners, it is resting on one of its corners. So that the corner has to come towards right side. For the lamina, everything we are satisfying towards left side. But for the corner, we are satisfying towards the right side. Remember, corner should come towards right side. However, the remaining side may come. But it should rest on one of its corners. Means the corner should come towards right side. Do you know in the lamina what we did? If I want a corner position, what we did? 
First, we have taken the help of some projection line. What should be the angle of this projection line? 45 degree. The first you draw the line somewhere at an angle of 45 degree. Simply you draw at an angle of 45 degree. Now we want corner of this side. Okay. So how to start? Draw 25 mm lamina. Uh, sorry, 25 mm sides of base. Perpendicular 25 mm. Perpendicular 25 mm. Perpendicular. So that the square prism resting on corner. If I see this square prism from the top, how it will look? It will look like this only. Correct? The square prism resting from the resting on HP on one of its corner. If I see the prism from the top, see. Assume that this is a prism. If I see this prism from the now I am showing the pentagon. Take it as a pentagon a square. If I see the square prism from the top resting on corner, it will look like this. So what is the name I supposed to give? Naming for each corners. First, I go with the naming of top face. Top face. This is A, B, C, and D. This is the top face. Bottom. Below A, there is one more point that is A1. Below B, B1. C1, D1. Same thing we did for the square resting on edge in the last class. Now we are going to do square resting on the corner position. Square prism resting on the corner position. Next. After this, you try to draw the center. Don't forget to draw the center. But the center, what you draw, it's supposed to be with a thin line. So thin line, draw with thin line. You will get a diagonal. For draw the diagonal, you get the center. And the name for this is O within a bracket O1. So why O1? O you can see at the top, but O1 is at the bottom, I cannot see. So this is the top view of the square prism resting on corner. Next. After this, we will go for the front view. What is the side dimension of this? I forgot to tell the dimension. This dimension is 25. You show it as 25. Next. Take the projection line from all the corners. Then complete the base. What is the change in the front view? I will tell you. Complete the base of the prism. Base is finished. What is height of the prism given? Height of the prism is given 60. So you take 60 mm height, 60 mm height, 60 mm. This height supposed to be 60 mm. Finish this. Done. Here, what has supposed? What are what is supposed to draw? Here, border is finished. Outermost is finished. If I see from the base, see this A, the prism is kept like this. No, A A1. It looks like a line, so it is drawn. Similarly, B, B1, I suppose to draw with thick line. Here, C, C1. In the last problem, what we did, can you see? In the last problem, the center line, we have drawn with the lax locus. We have drawn with the locus line. Here, I am drawing with a thick line. What is the reason? Just I will show you with a rough figure. See, if the prism is resting like this, this is A, A1, B, B1, and this is O and O1. If I see from the base here, I can see A, A1, so I draw the thick line. B, B1, so I draw the thick line. Before O, O1, is there any point here? There is no point. See, A, A1 is here, B, B1 is here. O, O1 is at the center. Before this, there is no point, but there is a solid. There is a solid, but there is no point here. So what I draw? I draw with the locus. Means I give the preference for axis here. But for this problem, before O to O1, there is one point called B to B1. So first give the preference for this. As usual, A to A1, draw thick line. C to C1, you draw thick line. But before that, I suppose to draw. Many students will do draw the locus line here. That is wrong. Why locus line will not come? Because before the point O, O1, there is one more point called B, B1. So give the preference for B, B1. So the locus line is here. B, B1 is here. So first give the preference for this. That is visible edge. So I am drawing with a visible line. Understood? When I supposed to use the locus line and when I supposed to use the visible line. I hope you understood. Why in the last problem at the middle we are used the locus line. Now why we are using the uh, visible line. I hope you understood. Why you supposed to before point O1 is there is if there is any point make it thick. If there is no point make it the axis line. That's all. Next. After this give the naming for this. What is the naming for the top surface? A dash, B dash. C dash. Here, D dash. At the bottom, A, 1 dash, B1 dash, C1 dash, D1 dash. 
then you also give the name for o2 o2 one is there it is just behind this line so give that put in a bracket o dash within a bracket o1 dash give the height of this what is the height of the prism he has given 60 so this is the this is the completion of first position front and top view please complete this come back to the class again fast complete with the rough figure first so here what is important thing is in the solid whatever the given condition should come towards right side then to place a square resting on corner take 45 degree try to complete this front top view then project try to get the front view fast so one set i'll give two minutes time complete that with a rough figure later on as soon as the class completes you complete with the action scale and one more change compared to the previous and this problem this problem is here this line the middle line in the previous problem i did with locus now i am drawing with a thick line only the reason behind that is you see the top view before o2 o1 if there is any point now it is b and b1 is there so give the preference for visible line of course behind this there is locus so whenever the two lines are overlapping i'll give the preference for visible line that is visible edge See if anybody having issue with logging with the official mail ID, you please mail to website updation at bmsit.in. You mail the issue properly to website updation at bmsit.in. They will clarify your doubts. Okay, good. The work that is completed. I'll go for the second position. So, in the second position, I told you to underline something that is very very important word. What is that? I told you to underline and retain as it is. I'll tell you when it comes for the pentagon. I'll show you because I'm not having the square prism now. I'm having the prism of pentagon. Once we're solving the problem of pentagon, I will explain that. So, for time being, you underline that. that sentence is negligible means we are not going to concentrate anything on that sentence that is an additional sentence given just to make you confuse what is that the two base edges contain the passing through the corner on which it rests the two base edges passing through the corner on which it rests makes equal inclination with hp that is an additional data given for you to confuse so don't worry you just underline that and neglect it okay how to how means that means it will automatically satisfy the condition so no 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 need to worry you neglect that two base edges containing the corner on which it rests makes equal inclination with hp that is a sentence you can neglect because that will automatically satisfy i'll explain how it will satisfy with the when it come for the prism of pentagon because i am not having a square prism to explain i am having a pentagon i'll explain with that okay next now you go for that what is the inclination given with respect to hp the inclination given with respect to hp is 40 degree okay 40 degree has to come what has to be 40 degree 40 degree supposed to be the axis axis of the prism should be 40 degree to hp where is axis in this figure you know axis is here o1 sorry o dash to o1 dash is the axis now it is standing perpendicular if you check out triangle it is perpendicular he don't want that perpendicular he want that to be at an angle of 40 degree 
So if I want to make this axis 40 degree, it is impossible to make the axis straight away 40 degree. So what I'll do, I will take the help of the base. So first you fix up the point. That is Z1 dash and fix up. I'll fix up the C1 dash. I will rotate the base. If I rotate the base, this entire prism will rotate. But you rotate the base in such a way that the axis should become 40 degree. So can you tell what is the angle of the base I suppose to rotate? The angle of the base I suppose to rotate is 90 minus the axis inclination. Now the axis inclination given is 40 degree. The, so the base should be 90 minus 40, that is 50 degree. Now you rotate the base to 50 degree. Now you try to rotate the base. This is supposed to be 50 degree, but no need to mention. So now once the base is done, you can remain anything, you can proceed. Draw perpendicular to the base. Measure C dash to A dash, sorry, C1 dash to A1 dash, drop perpendicular. What is height of this line? This line should be equal to the length of 60. Cut an arc, cut an arc. So that finish. Then one more, finished. So this is the prism. Uh, after rotating to 40 degree, it looks like that. But you should show no 40 degree. After this, you take the projection line. This should be a projection line. Only within the solid thick line and it should be projection and show this as 40 degree. This is expecting to show you. So to make this 40, it is impossible to. So take the help of the base first. Then you proceed with remaining things. Then. Name it. This is A1 dash, B1 dash, within a bracket D1 dash, within a bracket O1 dash. A dash, B dash, C dash, D dash. O dash. So that is the naming of the second position front. So after this, as usual, take the projection line down from all the points. Horizontal projection. They don't forget to show the arrow marks. I have not shown here. You show the arrow marks properly. Then, after taking vertical and horizontal projection, you please name it. That's all. Corresponding to A dash, A, A where it will come, it will come here. A, B, C, D, A1, B1, C1, D1, O1. O. So, we finish the name. Take the vertical projection, horizontal projection. Name, as usual, we did in the lamina, A dash to A, B dash to B, C dash to C. A1 dash to A1, B1 dash to B1, C1 dash to C1. Similarly, O1 dash to O1. Complete this. So once you complete the naming, we'll do that later, I'll give time. After completing the name, okay, we'll do only. You complete the naming and write the naming also. Wait for me till that. I'll explain how to complete this image.
Okay. I hope you have completed. I'll explain. It. After giving the name, you observe here. You follow the same procedure for all the problem. What is the follow procedure you're supposed to follow? Find come for come coming for the center. You find out the outermost points. You observe the outermost points and join those. So this is outermost for me. I join this. This is outermost for me. I join this. This is outermost for me. I join this. This is outermost. This is outermost. This is outermost. So, however, it come, you join to the outermost. Don't leave any points outside the outermost. Like that, you join. This depends upon the problem to problem. But you follow the procedure. The shape of this depends upon problem to problem. It may vary depend upon the sides resting on sides or edge. Sorry, sides or corner, and depending upon the prism also. If it is pentagon, it will be different. If it is rectangle, it will be different. So, don't need to worry. You find out from the center. You draw the outermost points. Complete it. Finished. After that, you remember the connecting order. What is the connecting order? Connecting order is A to B, B to C, C to D. Again, D to E. Then bottom A1 to B1, B1 to C1, C1 to D1, D1 to E. Then at last A to A1, B to B1, C to C1, D to D1. They, that is the connecting order that I explained in the last class. So where to see that? Check out here. A is here and B is here. Whether these two are connected, A is here and B is here. It is not connected, but you are supposed to check whether it is visible or not. How to see that? So to see that, you observe this figure from the top. You observe that figure from the top. If, if I observe this from the top, what are all the lines I can see? See, I can see this line. Easily I can see. I can see easily this line. That's correct. So these two lines I can see. That means whatever the naming are there on those two lines, I can easily see. Now what is required for me? I want A to B. Check out only A to B. Remain, you forget about that. You concentrate on this line. You concentrate on the naming. What is there on that line? We want A to B. Where is A, B in that figure? A dash is here. B dash is here. So I can see this line or not? I can easily see. If I see from the top, I can see. So any line which I can easily see, it's supposed to be with thick line or visible line. A to B is visible. Then B to C is already connected. No need to check the visibility. No need to see. Again, C to D is already connected. No need to see. D to A, you come for D to A. It is not connected. That you check out. Where is D? D is here. A is here. Can you see that line or not? I can easily see. So connect that with. So this complete the top A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A. Then coming for A1 to B1, B1 to C1, C1 to D1, D1 to A1. So A1, B1 is already outermost. Leave that. No need to check. So you worry about B1 to C1. B1, C1 is not connected. You check out here. Where is B1, C1? B1 is here. C1 is here. This line, I cannot see if I see from the top. Why? I can only see these two lines. So any lines, which I, whichever I cannot see, connect with hidden lines. Connect with hidden lines. This is the format for hidden. That's, the thickness of the hidden line is 0.5 and it should be continuous. It should not be continuous. 0.5 and it should not be continuous. So B1 to C1 is clear. Then C1 to D1. C1 to D1 is also not connected. You check out from the top again. D1 is here. C1 is here. I mean C1, C1 is here. D1 is here. I cannot see this line. So connect that with the hidden lines. So top phase A, B, C, D is finished. Bottom phase A1, B1, C1, D1 is finished. Then you go for A to A1, B to B1, C to C1. Check out. A is here. A1 is here. This is not connected. Now you check out from the top. Where is A? A is here. A1 is here. So I can easily see that line. So make it visible. A to A1 is visible. B to B1 is outermost. Leave that. Now I want C to C1. C to C1 is not connected. But here, while drawing A to A1, part of that A to C1 is already connected. But we are worrying about C to C1. Check out C to C1. C is here. C1 is here. I cannot see. So what to do? Here, you draw the hidden line. Only the left line. The left out portion should be hidden line. This is supposed to be as it is visible. This may be, this draw as it is visible. I want C to C1, no. Portion of that is already visible. So leave that. Remaining portion you draw with hidden lines. C to C1. That, under, that is understood that C to C1 is hidden. Then D to D1. D to D1 is already finished. Then to draw locus. Where to locus? Locus I supposed to draw or axis I supposed to draw. Axis should be between O and O1. To draw the axis, here the portion of that is already visible and portion of that is already hidden. So no need to draw the axis here. If nothing is there, 
if nothing is there between o to o1 then show with axis length now already the line joining from a to a1 and c to c1 is covered with o to o1 so in this case no need to worry or no need to draw the locus so that means you give the preference for visible first give the preference for visible next preference for hidden next preference for lock projection line the next preference for axis or the locus line so first i give the preference for a to a1 that means the portion of already o to o1 is covered with a to this visible line then i give the preference with hidden that means o portion of that o to o1 is already covered with hidden line there is no provision for me to draw the axis because those two lines are already overlapping you leave that then up to here the problem is not completed after this you have to go with the brackets so how many points are there inside the outermost if you go for the outermost there are so many points if i find out the inside points there are four that is o a c1 o1 so among these four something should be in the bracket what should be in the bracket check out one by one we will see o this is o whether it should be bracket or without bracket you check out from here o i can see the if i see from the top o i can see easily so don't put bracket that is without bracket then coming for e coming for a check out from the top a is here i can easily see the point a so don't put the, that also in the bracket then c1 you check out from the top where is c1 c1 is here i cannot see c1 if i see from the top so that the point c1 should be in bracket then go for o1 o1 is also here i cannot see so o1 also should be in bracket clear what should be in the bracket check out only the point which is there inside for those points one by one you check out the visibility which whichever you cannot see put that in a bracket okay so this completes the second position front and second position top first position front and top is this second position front and top is this copy okay. any doubts please ask me or else please copy i'll give sufficient time draw the rough figure the next class sorry after the class you please complete the actual scheme sir yes can you explain once again it should be in the brackets see find out see there are no so many points here a b c d a1 b1 c1 a1 o and o1 among those points you first segregate the points which are there inside the outermost so inside the outermost we have o a c1 and o only four remaining are all outermost points so some whatever you are going to put inside the bracket that should be only for those points only for something about those four points only so you concentrate one by one so let me first concentrate on o you check out the o from in this figure if i see from the top where is o the o is here that means the point o is on this line i can see this line along with that whatever the naming is there on this line i can see so whatever i can see without bracket i suppose to draw without bracket o so that i understood that o is without bracket coming to this point this is a you check out if i see from the top a is here correct that point a is visible so that draw a without bracket coming to c1 where is c1 c1 is here if i see from the top only i can see this line and this line and what are all the namings are there on this line and this line i can see but now c1 is here i cannot see that so put that in bracket similarly o1 o1 is here in this o1 is here o1 dash is here i cannot see put that in bracket clear i hope you understood yes sir Okay. Thank you. See, anybody having doubt, please don't hesitate. Ask the doubt. Clarify your doubts. Sir, uh, can you explain why the axis is solid? Oh, why? Why the axis is solid? Very good. See, here. why? Because if this is a prism cap. That means, uh, okay, uh, just a moment. I'll explain with hexagon concept because I didn't. I'm not having the prism of square. See, here. I'll explain the concept of the same thing with the hexagon prism. So now assume that hexagon prism is resting on the corner. Where means the corner has to come towards rightmost. This is correct. Correct. So the entire prism is resting on the corner position. This is the corner position. What it is resting. So what is the name of this point? Uh, okay. See, axis is here. Axis is at the center. Look, O to O one is at the center. Before O to O one, there is one edge. 
correct this edge is overlapping the o2 oval so whenever the edge is overlapping o2 oval then you give the preference for this so how many lines i can see i can see this line a a1 b b1 c c1 similarly o1 is there at the back where it is it is exactly overlapping the point b b1 so first you give the preference for this because of this reason i have drawn this visible see here you can see a a1 i have drawn a a1 you can see b b1 i have drawn b b1 you can see c c1 i can draw c c1 understood understood hello yes sir okay. yes sir <clears throat> very simple concept if before the point yes, o oval if there is any point make it visible if there is no point here make it axis that's all yes sir okay i hope you have completed that i hope you have completed this next next shot is given with respect to vp what is inclination with respect to vp the inclination is 30 degree correct the inclination is 30 degree so first i'll draw 30 degree line. first i'll draw the 30 degree line and explain what has to come on that 30 degree line. so and now we know it is 30 degree so take it take the parallel line take the line parallel draw simply a 30 degree line so with respect to vp it is 30 degree now you concentrate what has to come on the 30 degree is yes, given the axis of the prism is inclined to hp at 40 degree and to vp at 30 degree that means he is expecting you to place the axis here but if you want to place the axis here you should check the axis length of first position and second position what is the axis length in the first position can you tell in the first position it is 60 or 65 whatever it is given in the first position the axis length is 60 correct i drawn 65 you take it 60 if you drawn 65 no issue the axis length is bigger after rotating the length of the axis in the second figure it is reduced it is reduced again he is expecting you to rotate the axis again so whenever the same line is rotating twice what is required beta angle beta is required right now here he is expecting beta. you to rotate the axis to hp at an angle of 40 degree again the axis to vp at 30 degree so beta is required so how to draw the beta for this solid check the length of original axis if it is 65 you take 65 if it is 60 you take 60 whatever you have taken so cut an arc keeping conveniently you cut an arc so i will get an arc here then draw the locus same procedure what we did in the lamina but there he used to tell a median bisector or a edge here he is telling axis that's all the axis is rotated to hp so we are taken the original length of the axis then you take the second means after rotating uh, after reducing its length where is the length of o2 one o2 one is here it is reduced because of this rotation take this keeping this as a center cut an arc so you get intersection join that join this and this point extend it to next so what is the angle you will get here whatever the angle you are getting that is called beta or it is also called as apparent inclination apparent inclination of the axis any doubts any doubts here why we have taken beta we have taken beta just because he is telling axis is rotated to hp at 40 degree and to vp at 30 degree that means the same axis is rotated twice once with respect to hp at an angle of 40 and again with respect to vp at an angle of 30 so what you have to find out the beta apparent inclination clear for the same problem if you don't want to get beta then what he is supposed to give he is supposed to give the axis of the prism is inclined to hp at 40 degree and appears to be inclined to vp at 30 degree that means he has calculated the beta as 30 degree and he has given directly beta to you whenever in the same question appears to be is given that he has mentioned then it means that axis is already rotated and beta is calculated and directly beta is given to you no need to check out the apparent inclination if he has given appears to be understanding yes sir okay fine now you understood this and you have placed you have drawn the beta what you supposed to place now you supposed to copy this figure over here this figure over here for which line you supposed to copy the second figure top view over here 
with respect to o and o1 supposed to be these two points and may and remember none of this point should touch xy or it should cross xy it should be well below so if you want to place this entire prism well below you take this parallel line little bit below then only it is possible to accommodate easily so now o is o1 is here o is here you can either rotate like this or you can either rotate like this there is no rule how to rotate you can rotate however you want so the very simple and easiest method to rotate is this is o1 and this is o take this rotate means o1 you fix up here o let you put this you place here that means o1 will be here if i rotate o will come here so that will give the name o1 and o finished so once the o1 and o is finished you check out on this o and o1 how many intersections are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 so that you try to get all the six intersection on this beta line measure from o to a cut in half measure from o to a keep it there then measure from o to c o to a is this o to c is this sorry o1 to c1 o1 to c a o1 to a extend this you will get one more point called c so name this this will become a1 this will become c1 this will become a this will become c put as usual whatever is there in the bracket you put it in the bracket clear just i extended on either side and i taken all the points on that line then can you see these points are finished all these points what is there on o to o is finished how to get d d1 b1 db can anybody tell how to get d1 b so d1 b1 and db draw perpendicular from o to the perpendicular very good draw the perpendicular from o1 draw the perpendicular to o so if i draw perpendicular lines you will easily get measure from o1 to d o1 to d1 and other side b1 here also measure and draw d and other side it is b join however it is wherever it is hidden wherever this bracket you draw the same you draw the same thing here okay then just the same figure it is rotated like that the same figure i rotated to an angle of 30 degree and identified the value of beta i have placed this figure to the beta line to the second line see after this you take the vertical projection horizontal projection b there after completing this you take vertical horizontal projection and name it if possible name all the points and be ready i'll explain how to find out the visibility so till now is there any doubt please ask me if you are having anybody anybody having doubt you please ask me if anybody is having doubt please ask me take vertical and horizontal projection be ready till that bhanu pratap any doubts no sir okay
see many of you not joined in the class google classroom pavan dorjay krutik shirant shrikant akash harshit adarsh ask them to join with the for the google classroom with the official mail id and those who have joined twice please join only once Okay, I hope you are complete. Eh? Now I'll take the projection lens and I'll explain. So plenty of lines will come. Don't get confused. If the lines are overlapping also, don't get confused. No need to worry. Just you take projection horizontal, vertical. Name it. We start naming A one will come here. A sorry, not this. A is here. A will be here. Sorry, A dash. B dash. C dash. D dash. Similarly, A one dash. B one dash. C one dash. D one dash then this is O one dash and this is O dash so I got the name correct I cleared A B C D all the namings I cleared here so after this after naming the after naming everything you connect with the outermost as usual procedure after naming go with the outermost points where is the outermost See here A to A is outermost. A to B1 is outermost. B1 to C1 is outermost. Then C1 to C is outermost. C to D is outermost. D to A is outermost. So don't worry about the lines or points. In some, in your figure, the points you may come inside the D go outside. No issue. You find out the outermost and try to draw the outermost. That's all we want. What we want is you need to find out the outermost, and I want you to draw the outermost points. That's all I'm expecting. Then after that, you need to connect A, B, C, D first. See, A to B itself is not connected. Then B to C is not connected. A to B is not connected. B to C is not connected. You need to connect that. Whether it's supposed to be connected with a visible line or hidden line, you have to check out. How to check out? You see here. You see this figure from the bottom. If you see this prism from the bottom, there are two faces. That is A, B, C, D. A1, B1, C1, D1. So out of these two faces, which face is nearer for you? If I see at the bottom, if I stand at the bottom and if I see the face A, B, C, D is nearer compared to A1, B1, C1, D1. Correct? Is it true? If I see at the bottom and if I check out, there are two faces. A, B, C, D, A1, B1, C1, D1. So out of these two faces, if I see from the bottom and see, if I check, I check out A, B, C, D is visible or nearer to you. So here also, we want A to B. Just as it is, as A, B, C, D is nearer for you, make A to B visible, B to C visible. Any of C to D is already outermost, leave that. C, D to A is outermost, leave that. So this is finished. Top face is finished. Again, coming to this. A1, B1 is already connected. B1, C1 is connected. Now C1, D1 is not connected. D1, A1 is not connected. Check out from the base. Where is A1, B1, C1, D1? Compared to A, B, C, D, A1, B1, C1, D1 is far away to you. So that should be hidden. All the A1, B1, B1, C1, C1, D1, D1, A1 is supposed to be hidden. But here already A1 to B1, B1 to C1 is outermost. No need to make that hidden. Only remaining C1 to D1 is not connected, connect with hidden. D1 to A1 is not connected, connect with hidden. Whatever it is not connected, only those things supposed to be in hidden. 
make this e1 uh, c1 to d1 d1 to e1 hidden any doubts in this top face and bottom face is finished now we want a to a1 b to b1 c to c1 to be connected where is a a is your a1 is here already connected a to a1 is already connected leave that now b to b1 we want to connect between b and b1 we want to connect between b and b1 so there is no connection you check out out of b1 and b which is inner point whether b1 is inner or b is inner the point b is inner point correct so from this point we want to connect from b dash to b1 dash but from this point already two visible edges are passed two points two edges are already visible the other edge that is b to b1 must be visible understanding so b to b1 we want to connect check out out of these two which is inner point b is the inner point from this point how many edges are passing all the edges should be same way already we know two edges are visible the remaining edges should be visible so a to a1 is finished b to b1 is finished c to c1 is outermost leave that no need to worry c to c1 leave that it is connected then you go for d to d1 d and d1 out of these two which is outermost point d is outermost and innermost is d1 so you concentrate only on this point i want the connection from d1 to d out of these two which is inner point inner point is d1 so you should concentrate only on d1 from d1 you should draw edges whatever the edges it is passing all the edges should be same pattern here we know already hidden again hidden the one more edge which must be passing it must be hidden make it with hidden then as usual axis o to o1 should be locus axis o to o1 should be locus don't change the format of axis o, o to o1 axis don't see the visibility for that just you draw with the axis after this to make note or to check out whether the solution is correct or wrong what is the procedure i told check out whether all the lines are parallel see a to a1 is parallel to b to b1 parallel to o to o1 c to c1 d to d1 if all the lines are parallel then definitely your solution is correct understood if all the lines are parallel definitely your solution is correct after this something is left out that is something to be kept in bracket what should be kept in bracket only the inner points how many points are there inside b b dash o1 dash o dash d dash there are four points inside the outermost that is b dash o1 dash d1 dash o1 o dash so let us check one by one what we want we want we'll see one by one we'll see go with o so where is o compared to o1 o is nearer to you so don't put bracket then b compared to b1 b is nearer to you don't put bracket leave that then o1 so o is here o1 is far away so put o1 in bracket similarly d1 in bracket so what should be in bracket o1 and d1 supposed to be in bracket and how to identify the solution is correct or wrong if all the edges are parallel that is lateral edges b to b1 a to e1 c to c1 d to d1 and o to o1 if it is parallel then the solution is correct complete is fast completed if anybody has any doubt please ask me because why i am re repeating that please ask means all the problems holds good holds means all the problems we are going to solve with the similar procedure all the problems we are going to solve with the similar procedure just what are the changes is the type of the prism may change either it may be hexagon square pentagon resting on corner or edge that only that is a change from problem to problem except that everything remains the same procedure i am telling So understand the procedure. 
don't mug up the problems everything is given in the question we have to convert in that sentence form into graphical form that's all so to convert that you should remember the procedure anybody having doubts please ask me don't hesitate Brijesh, you are logged in into logged in by using a two IDs. You close one, you delete one ID. Sir, I have closed sir already. When? Sir, today morning. Okay, fine, good. I will check out once again afterwards. Then. Harshit is not here. Harshit Kumar, you are not at all logged into. The class, you please log into the Google Classroom. Yes, sir. You log into the Google Classroom using official mail ID. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. And others, please somebody inform others. Kotham, Harshit, sorry, others, Akash, Shrikant, Chirant, Dorje, and Pawan Kalyan to join for the Google Classroom. Okay, I hope you are completed. I hope that is completed. We'll go for the next problem. We will go for the next problem. And that problem I will give you as an assignment. Try to solve and post that in a in a what for me personally to the WhatsApp or in a group. No issue. I will check out what, what mistakes you have done and I'll let you know. Okay, take the A square prism of a square prism of 25 mm sides of base, a square prism of 25 mm sides of base, 60 mm axis length, 60, 60 mm axis length, rest on HP, rest on HP on one of its edges of the base. Rest on HP on one of its edges of the base such that such that the axis of the prism is such that the axis of the prism is inclined to HP at 40 degree such that the axis of the prism is inclined to HP at 40 degree and and appears to be inclined to VP at and appears to be inclined to VP at 45 degree 45 degree and appears to be inclined to be here 45 degree. Draw the projection of the prism. Draw the draw the projection of the prism. Draw the projection of the prism. So can anybody tell what is the change in this problem given? 
beta angle is already to be inside to it no first from first you come the given problem and the, this problem what is uh, displayed on the board the displayed on the board it is the problem on square the given is also square piece but here the given problem is means the displayed problem is resting on one of its corners of the base but the problem given is resting on one of its edges of the base that is the first change so we supposed to draw edges of the base resting on one of its edges of the base then the axis of the prism is inclined at 40 degree there is no change here but make sure here you will not get axis here you will get you will not get a visible line here you will get a locus line to check out why it is locus line because if the prism is resting on edges if the square prism is resting on edge before o to o1 there is there will be no point here. so that will be locus then whether beta is required or not in this problem for the given problem no sir whether beta is required or not no sir already given Yes, because he has given, even though the axis is rotated twice, he has given appears to be inclined at forty degree, forty five degree to VP. That means beta is already given, so no need to calculate the value of beta. Is it clear? So instead of forty five, you take it forty. Instead of forty five, you take forty. Forty on HP and forty on VP. Even though the axis line is rotated twice, beta is not required. Okay. Then one more problem I'll ask you. I'll not ask you to draw. Just I'll tell tell the question. You tell me what changes in that. What changes in that question? Dictating question and here. Don't write on that. Just you observe the question. What I'm telling. A square prism of 25 mm sides of base, 60 mm axis length, rest on HP on one of its corners of the base. Is there any change in the first sentence? First sentence and the given problem and this problem. A square prism. Of 25 mm sides of base, 60 mm axis length, rest on HP on one of its corners of the base, such that the two base edges containing the corner on which it rests makes equal inclination with HP. You neglect this sentence wherever it comes. You neglect because it's already satisfied. Full stop. Draw the projection of the prism when the axis is inclined at an angle of 40 degree to HP and appears to be 40 degree to VP. So, what is the change in this problem? And the displayed problem. The prism is resting on one of its corners. Okay, that is same. Here also, it is resting on corner. And the axis is inclined to HP at forty degree, and VP and appears to be inclined to VP at forty degree. So, what is the change? The beta angle is given over here. Very good. In that given, that whatever the problem I told now. There, the beta angle is given, so everything remains same except don't do the beta. Without doing the beta, if you solve the problem, that will be satisfied. Is it clear? So now we have completed the problems on square, that is resting on corner, resting on edge, with beta, without beta. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now I will go with the problem on pentagon. Today we will solve one problem on pentagon. Then we will wind up the class. Today we will solve the problem on pentagon, and we will wind up the class. See, as soon as the class completes, this problem what I had drawn, try to draw the actual scale. And right now I will solve one more, which is pentagon. That also you try to draw actual to the actual scale. And one assignment problem I given. So today totally we will be solving three, two in the class and one in assignment. Okay. Okay. We will go for the pentagon. You take the question. A pentagonal prism. A pentagonal prism, a pentagonal prism of 25 mm sides of base. A pentagonal prism of 25 mm sides of base rest on HP. Rest on HP. Rest on HP on one of its. Rest on HP on one of its corners of the base. Rest on HP on one of its corners of the base. Corners of the base, such that, such that, the axis of the prism is inclined to be HP at, such that, the axis of the prism is inclined to HP at forty degree, forty degree, and appears to incline to VP at, and appears to incline to VP at, appears to incline to VP at. 
40 degree. 40 degree. Draw the projection of the prism. Draw the projection of the prism. Draw the projection of the prism. So here is x, y, vp, hp. So this is the problem. If the problem given is just you understand how to draw the first position first. The given set of equation is based on pentagonal prism resting on HP on one of its edges of the base. Sorry, corners of the base, correct? It is given corners of the base. So that the corner should come towards right side. You remember that the corner should come towards right. whatever the given condition in the solid, it's supposed to come towards right side. So that so first I'll draw both front and top view, then I'll explain. Now then you check out if I'm having any doubt, and you stop me. See, I'll draw with a straight line, vertical line of 25 mm sides, then 180 degree, 180 degree, 25 mm. This already you know how to draw in the pentagon in the lamina. So this completes the pentagon resting on corner. Corner should come towards right side. Name it A, B, C, D, E is the top face. E1, B1, C1, D1. E1 is the bottom face. Then I told you to find out the center. To find the center here, uh, here is a very important thing. Hence, the number of sides are odd, odd numbers. So finding the center is not same as drawing the diagonal. Here, what you're supposed to do, every corner, from every corner, you draw the line. That line should be touching the midpoint of opposite edge. So from this, if you draw the line, it should touch the midpoint of opposite edge. See, this is the edge opposite to this midpoint it should touch. So from this corner, from this corner, if I draw the line, that line for this corner, which is opposite edge, this is the opposite edge. Exactly it should touch the midpoint of the opposite edge, join the line. So only two lines are enough. Only two lines are enough to identify the center. So why I am doing this? Just to find out the center point of the prism. So this is O, O1. So anybody having doubt? And mandatory. This is mandatory to take from this corner, one line. Then other line you can take from any corners. Any corner to the opposite edge midpoint. Definitely, wherever those two are intersecting, that point is called as the center point of the prism. Whenever the number of sides are odd, you're supposed to do like this. If it is even number, diagonals. Clear? This is the only change compared to the square and pentagon in the first position. So after this, take the projection. Take the projection, take the projection. I think probably it is not seen. Take the projection from all the edges, all the corners, and also from O, so that you'll get four lines here. If you take from O, you'll get four different lines. So, what is height of the prism given? Height of the prism given is 60. So complete the base first, complete the edge, complete the edge. It is of 60. Everything is 60. Then you check out. If I see from the base, O to one is that. B to B1 is that, C to C1 is that. So let us draw three lines first. Three lines. A dash to A1 dash, B dash to B1 dash, C dash to C1 dash. So these three lines, A to A1, B to B1, C to C1. If I see from base, I can see A to A1, B to B1, C to C1. All the three lines I can see. But where is O to O1? O to O1 is supposed to join from here. Is there any point before O to O1? No, there is no point here. Just if I move further, I get B to B1. So here, there is no point before O to O1, so that I'm supposed to draw O to O1 with locus. So this is O dash, O1 dash. Then A, B, C, D is finished. D. D dash will come here. D1 dash will come. A, B, C, D. E dash, E1 dash. This is 60 mm height. Any doubts here? See, A to A1 is visible, B to B1 is visible, C to C1 is visible. But O to O1 axis I have drawn here. Why? Because here if I see A to A1, B to B1, C to C1, three lines. And O to O1 is also there. If I take projection, you will get four lines, no? So you should draw O to O1. How to draw that? Check out. If there is any point exactly below O to O1, if there is any point here, then it's supposed to be visible. If there is no point, draw with locus. That's what I told in the square lamina also. Is it here? So this is a front view. Front and top view of this pentagonal lamina, first position. What is the second position given? This axis of the prism supposed to be at an angle of 40 degree. So that what should be the base? 
If you want to make the axis 40 degree, take the help of the base as 90 minus 40, that is 50 degree. Keeping this as center C1 dash, draw this line. This line should be at an angle of 50 degree. Then draw perpendicular, measure this, draw perpendicular, measure this, locus, complete this. So this is E dash, B dash, C dash, D dash, E dash, O dash, E 1 dash, B 1 dash, C 1 dash, D 1 dash, E 1 dash, O 1 dash. Then extend O to O, this axis whatever you have drawn, only it is supposed to be locus inside the solid. Above that if I extend, it is supposed to be projection angle and show this 40 degree, whatever the angle is given. Take the vertical, horizontal, complete the outermost, complete this first. After this, take the vertical horizontal projection B here. I will explain the outermost. Okay, so after this, I hope you have completed it here. I'll take the projection lines. I'll take the vertical projection from all the points. Take the horizontal projection from all the points here. 
complete the naming. You give the naming. So that naming will be here. A, B, C, D, E. E1, B1, C1, D1, E1. Okay, we got like this. Then here O1, here you get O. So that is how you will get a naming. You check out, you will get a naming. All the A, B, C, D, E, A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, O and O. So once you finish this, what is the next procedure? Coming for the center, identify the outermost. Going for the center, identify the outermost. So outermost is this, outermost is this, outermost is this, outermost is this, outermost, outermost, outermost. You please identify the outermost. So this completes the outermost. Now, how many points are there inside? O is inside, E is inside, A, C, O1. So these are all the points inside. One, two, three, four, five. Five points are inside. Out of those five points, something should be in bracket. So first I'll explain the bracket thing. Next I'll go with the header. Something should be in the bracket. What are all those things? So for to identify what should be in the bracket, you go for this figure. See from the top. If I see this figure from the top, I can easily see this line. I can see this line. These two lines I can see. And hence those two lines I can see. Along with that, whatever the namings are there on that line, I can see easily. So we'll go with O. O I want. Whether I should put in bracket or not, we'll check out. O is here. This line I can easily see. So O, o is also there on that line. So no, don't put in bracket. Then coming to E. E is here. I can see this point. No, no bracket. A. A is here again. I can see no bracket. Then C1, C1 is here, I cannot see, if I see from the top, only I can see whatever the naming are there on these two lines, I cannot say C1. So put C1 in bracket. Similarly O1, only C1 and O1 is supposed to be in bracket. So bracket thing is finished. Then you go for the visibility, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, E to A. So A to B, A to B is not connected, but B to C is connected, C to D is connected, D to E is not connected, E to A is not connected. So only there is a connection from B to C, C to D. Remaining is not connected. So we want A to B. You check out this figure from here. A is here, B is here. I can see. A to B is finished. B to C is outermost. No need to check. No need to check this. C to D is outermost. No need to check. D to E. Again, D is here. E is here. I can see. Make it visible. E to E. So this is visible. Top face is finished. A, B, C, D, E. Similarly, bottom. E1, B1 is outermost already. No worry. B1, C1 is not connected. Check out. B1 is here. C1 is here. I cannot see. Put that with a hidden line. B1, C1. Similarly, C1, D1. D1, E1 is outermost. E1, E1 is outermost. So the top A, B, C, D, E, bottom E1, B1, C1, D1 is finished. Then you go for A to E1, B to B1, C to C1. A is here. A1 is here. This is not connected. Check out. A is here. A1 is here. I can easily see. So make it visible. B to B1 is outermost. These are C to C1. C is here. C1 is here. I cannot see. So make it hidden. C to C1, I'll make it hidden. Then D to D1 is connected, finished. E to E1, E is here, E1 is here, I can see that, so make it visible. So this completes the line, uh, the uh, solid. Then you go for, go for O to O1. So if I want to connect O to O1, already the part, portion of that is already connected with hidden line. Only left out is this. So only that much you show in axis. Only this should be axis, the remaining should be hidden. Because whenever the lines are overlapping, first give preference for visible, then for hidden, then for locus. So here, hidden line is overlapping the locus. So locus line, you draw only the remaining portion. And the remaining is C to C1, we will concentrate more rather than O to O1. So finish this.
Finished? I hope you are completed. I hope you are completed till here. Then, what is in the angle with respect to VP? The inclination with respect to VP is 40 degree. So what should be 40 degree? Again, he is telling axis should be 40 degree. Axis is 40 degree. Whether he has given appears to be or not, even though he is telling axis is rotated with respect to VP again, he has given appears to be in the question. Whenever he has given appears to be, that means what? You have to copy this figure, same figure as it is here without beta. Because that means he has given the appears to be means uh, apparent inclination is calculated and given. That angle itself is beta. Just you rotate at an angle of 40 degree. And copy the same figure and however it is, wherever it is hidden, wherever it is bracket, same figure it's supposed to be rotated. Then complete this. Take the vertical horizontal projection, complete this. So can you complete the final position and come back to the next class or whether I should complete this final position front and top, you know. You have to answer. If you are capable of doing by yourself, I will wind up the class or else I will explain that. So it's nothing. Here you copy the same figure here. Project the vertical and horizontal position. Name it. First you name that. Complete the outermost. Complete the outermost. Then you check out after rotating here which is nearer for you. There will be A, B, C, D, E, A1, B1, C1, D1. Out of those two, any one will be nearer to you. So which is nearer to you, that you make it visible. And whichever is far away, except outermost, remaining you make it hidden. Then A to A1, B to C1, C to C1, D to D1. As the procedure I explained, you try to complete. Whether you can do or whether I should explain now. Anyone, please reply. Mm -hmm. In mind. Huh? We'll do, sir. We'll do. Please try to do because every problem, all the steps I cannot do. I can explain the procedure to you. So remaining, I'm expecting you to complete and come back. And then only few, only two or three students are messaging me to check out whether they have done mistake or correct. Is there any mistakes? So I don't want that. I want everybody to participate and learn the problems how to solve. Okay. So all of you, please type your request number. You can leave the class. Still, there is a time for the class. Complete the problem to the actual scale. Post that to me. Fast. Type your request number. You can leave the class. Thank you.